All right, guys, so we're going to watch one of the videos from my Blender Octane 101 guide. It's a full course that I'm basically making to teach you how to use Blender Octane. For those of the members who are in the community, they get immediate access to videos as they're being released because I'm building the course as we go. So if you're interested in that, check the link down below. All right, now we're going to look at our max samples and max samples for previews. So back here again, I do still have the kernel set up here. What I'm going to do just I'm going to go ahead and switch this back over to our shader editor because we're just seeing a copy over here. It's kind of redundant, right? Here we are. Here is our cube. And right now you'll see these numbers ticking here. I'm running a sample in the viewport of 500. 500 is my sample count right now. How do I change that? If we come over here, you'll see, let me stretch that out. Max preview samples 500. I can also knock this down to 200. Now, if we come back over here, you can see max samples of 200. Let's kind of get that up. There we go. Now, that's how we would change our viewport samples. Now, for our rendering samples, of course, here it is up at the top. We can change it up to here. Again, 200. And then if I turn this off and go ahead and hit render, here it's just rendering out. And again, that was basically our 500 samples, which we chose. They're going to be a little bit different, right? If I come back over here or I chose 200. We can change this back to 500. Now we're going to render out 500 samples ticking. There it is right there. Three, four, 500. So 500 samples. So that's how you set up your viewport samples versus your rendering samples. All right, now we're going to get it into render settings. This is the big one. This is the one that everybody wants to know. A lot of people, especially when they first come over here, they literally complain and say that Octane is running or rendering slower than it did in cycles. And a lot of it has to do with our render settings. So first thing first, I'm going to actually switch back to my default scene because I've already set up some settings for me that will help me to optimize my render. So it's going to vary from each person, but hopefully this will help you get set up and you can start to tweak and find out your own. And then I, I advise you or recommend you to go ahead and save your setup okay so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a new setup file and this is my default scene here so what I've got going on here if we scroll over here and let's open this up to give us a lot more space first thing first we already went over max samples here and we already went over max view uh, preview samples which is our viewport so this is my startup file which a lot of it came over from my laptop which I was running a 1050 ti -ite. it was a very very low in laptop very low and struggling to run Octane, but it was able to run Octane and I worked on it for many years. So I kind of merged over some of my settings and still haven't changed them, unfortunately. But still, I kind of here's my my diffuse depth, which I use about, you know, is basically like it says the maximum path depth in which diffuse uh, reflections are allowed. So the bounce is basic in a sense, kind of, you know, so I have it at eight. Specular depth, I run at 12, and then scattering at 8. Again, depending on the scenes, these numbers always change. Like if I have a lot of specular and reflection going on, I will crank that up. Same with if I got, you know, some subsurface going on and stuff like that, and, and, and I've got things like that going on, the scattering will come up, okay? So the, none of this stuff is set in stone, okay? These are just my low-end benchmark that kinda, I kind of set it at. Some of this stuff I don't get into because at the moment I'm still studying about them and as time goes on, I will make more videos on these other settings, but I'm just giving you the ballpark stuff to get you going and up and running. The minimum overlap volume I leave set to four. That's basically when you have multiple volume systems going, you might get some artifactings because of the layer. So this is where we can kind of tweak that to clean that up. Then we got Ray Epps. Espelon, which I will get to in another video because it deserves its own, but at the moment I leave it at default. Then I come in here to filter size, another one that I leave at default. This has helped to reduce uh, aliasing. Alpha shadows, I also leave checked here. It says enable direct light through opacity map. If disabled, ray tracing will be faster, but render incorrect shadows for alpha mapping, geometry, and specular materials with fake shadows enabled. So again, this is more advanced setting, but for now, just leave these at default. We've got our caustic blurs for caustic. I have that set to default. Then we come to GI clamp. Now this one, I do change. This one will come default set to a million. And GI, what it says is GI clamp reduces fireflies. At a million, at the default setting, you might see some little fireflies here and there on your reflections and things like that from past videos that I've watched learning the cinema 4d watching cinema 4d guys use octane most of us 
most of them brought this number down to something like from the range of 100 to 10 and even maybe even lower. For me, I've gotten some of the best results by having it at 10. In my default file, it is set to 10. I bring it way down. So that's just a recommendation. Play with that. See what works good for you. Leave it at a million. Render some stuff. If you see a lot of fireflies, bring that number down to 100, maybe 1,000. Play with the values. But for me, I put it at 10, and I've, had, I've never really had any issues with fireflies too much. This next one, nested diet, diet, blah, 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 blah. Again, I leave this at default. Same with this one, I leave at default. And then max sub level, uh, sub subdivision levels, I leave this at default. I will get into these later on in time and break them down in more advanced videos. One thing that you also definitely want to use is here our alpha channel. Lots of people struggle. This is basically how we get a PNG background on something. If let me show and quickly show you here, I've got my render engine. I've got my my render image going here, and if I want him to be on a PNG background alpha channel, now he will be rendered out on a PNG channel. If I go here and render. Oh, actually, he is turned off in my render layer. So again, one quick tip. It's important to work at real well scale in Octane because that's the way it was built and designed. You'll get the best results if you work in real well scale. So I have this guy in here always to keep me in check to when I'm working on things to always have them in real world scale. He is very close to the, the Blender default cube, which is, a, you know, basically one meter. You can kind of see there he's almost basically just a little shorter than the average height of a human, but right around there. So every time I'm working, this helps me to keep things in real world scale so I have him in my scene but by default he is not going to be rendered he is just clearly in my viewport and then if I go ahead and render this out right now with the alpha channel check now we have him on a PNG background now also while I'm at the subject lots of people complain why does this edge have an edge on it like why does it look pixelated because in octane again it's really heavily set up for a more professional workflow and if any of you know who use nuke or things like that when you're doing a uh, color grading and stuff like that you separate the alpha from it do all your color grading and then you pre multiply the alpha back well it's set up by default to have it unmultiplied so basically you need to re multiply and it's easily you can easily do that inside of the compositor here and just check convert pre multiply on that and then you should be able to go ahead and it will re multiply the edge on that and I don't think it's going to show it in this one here just because I have mine set up where it's not like that. So I think if you go back into your settings here, output settings, and we scroll back down here to Octane Output. And then what we're going to do is you'll switch it to EXR and you'll see here pre-multiply alpha we can go ahead and turn that on and then boom you should be good to go but typically even if I don't do this and like I just leave it the way we had with the PNG and I go ahead and render the image out and then we'll get the alpha that's not showing correctly once I come in here and go image and then I'll go save a copy and then I'll say PNG with the RGB alpha once I do that and quickly save this to the desktop and then if I go ahead and open that file back up you can clearly see here that the alpha is now correct so don't worry about it being like that as long as you save out your export your PNG you'll be fine in the viewport it will show it broken like it does show here but in the final one it is not continuing on with our render settings so there's how you do it and then also you have the option here to keep the environment with an enabled uh, channel something I don't hardly ever use but these are other options then again light IDs which I'm not going to get into at the moment I'm just going to keep it simple for us right now we scroll into light we also have some more advanced stuff here some AI lighting tools which I won't mention at the moment and then we'll get into you got sampling again I keep all of this at default these are more advanced settings again like I said octane is like you're coming from a Cessna plane and cycles to 747 jumbo jet in octane there's buttons and gadgets and things everywhere okay so if we move on down the line here um, what we do once thing I do use here adaptive sampling this can considerably increase your, your render times I mean or decrease your render times I should say here is a better scene to actually show you here so here with adaptive adaptive sample on it took 20 seconds to render this frame and then without adaptive sampling on it took 25 seconds to render this frame so again getting these settings and getting this properly set up really does help reduce times it focuses basically the rendering time on the areas that really need it and the areas that don't 
don't really need a lot of time, it renders them quicker. So again, we'll do uh, another more advanced vid video on the adaptive sampling and all the settings and how to properly set that up later. Then next we have white color spectrum. It's set to D65. Again, if you don't know about this, you don't just leave it default for those who do know about this you can can change it in here and basically set it back to legacy flat or d65 okay so this is pretty much again some more advanced settings leave it at stock if you don't know deep Im deep imaging again this comes in for deep imaging compositing then we do have our tune shader here which i had not messed with so i will leave that as it is now we're getting to some more neat nice stuff out here is our octane server okay if you look here this is basically going to give us if i scroll this really far out resource system okay is basically telling me all so i leave a lot of this stuff set to where it's at because if you don't know you can get some different results and it will change and affect things differently one thing i do use this for here if you have your render here and for example i want to get a clay render like i have all my materials and things on here and i just want to do a clay render this is where i will do it i come here final image type is uh, set to octane default again we do have l LDR and DR, but leave this at a default. But right here, we can do clay mode and it's set to none. I can set this to gray and then here it is, or I can even choose like a color and then you'll have to set that up. But typically, if you just want to do that, you most of us will want to just do a gray and they'll automatically overwrite all of our materials there. So that's how you would set that up. And then again, just some different other stuff. Leave these stock if you don't know what you're doing. So Octane Node Graph, this is again getting more advanced. This will break in and show us what's really going on behind the doors. It's very similar to Octane Standalone. This is basically kind of like merged in here, but we don't just don't mess with that stuff if you don't know what you're doing. Again, we do have Octane, an open database system here. If you click here, you'll see it flashing on the bottom. Here, I'll get into this in another video, but you'll have a local database system which you can use and save your local database of materials. It's a lot easier just to use Blender's native asset browser, to be honest. But do we do all have a live database system here? I'll show you in other videos how we can bring in some materials again this is not really an up-to-date system that octane or otoy is working on anymore it's kind of dated and but there are some quick little easy ways to use this which i will show in different videos don't you really you don't want to really rely on this at all too much you want to build up your own assets browser with the default blender asset setup then we also have show octane log which will show your log files here for more of the advanced people who like to get into that we've got that there then we have show octane viewport and this is kind of very similar to the cinema 4d guys they would actually take this and dock this in there and that's how they view octane but for us ours is built in native into uh, into blenders viewport so we don't really need to use this at all pretty much i've rarely i've never pretty much ever used this so it, it is there again more advanced stuff i don't know about then after that we do have device preferences which this one will be very important for you if you look here this will show my gpu that i have running if you do have the paid premium version you are able to run multiple gpus on the free version we only can run one gpu so this is where you will come in and start to enable multiple gpus for us we only have one once your file starts getting a little bit larger here you'll be able to see you're getting close to running out of memory for your gpu it'll have it all here you'll see you'll it'll break it down for you here and the room is you can do all that here for those of you who know what you're doing if you don't just leave it alone then we also have where is it at? Network preferences and network preferences. I don't use it and I don't even see it popping up. So again, leave it alone. And then we have the active activation state, which is our basically our server here, which we start up to when we fire up Octane and that shows you it right there. Okay. From there, then we do have out of core. So if you are running close to the limit of your GPU, there is this out of core option, which I rarely ever use. And even on my laptop, I would never use it because it does really affect the way things are being the way the memory is being shifted around I, I don't really get into it too much this will be more for an editor video once a, a more advanced video for now leave it off okay leave it off grease pencil doesn't really contain to us too much I don't use it freestyle again I don't use that I turn that off and then again back to our color management tab which we also know I talked about earlier always use raw viewport transform for octane okay that pretty much runs it down on everything that's here in our setting our render settings and again 
again, a lot of these numbers you're going to tweak from for your scene, for what you've got going, and for your GPU and for your needs. Many people ask me, do it takes forever? What, what my settings are, are not working on the settings you gave me are not working? It's because yeah, it's for my GPU. I'm running a, a 4080 Supra. You know, when I was running my 1050 Ti, I couldn't even imagine using some of these settings that I'm using here now. This you really have to experiment, play, and it's gonna change from scene to scene. So that's the render. If you guys wanna watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off. So jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos, and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. Peace.